All right, so I want to do just a, a quick review of um, what we talked about last week. What is um, a, a greeter? There we go, They're all, all seven are there. First person, a new visitor, will meet and know. What, what, what should every greeter have? Paper and pencil, right? Why? Yeah, write names down. I don't know about you, but I can't remember names. You know, especially you're meeting new people. You know, you, you, so <clears throat> very, very, very important. Especially when they leave and you say goodbye, Bill. Goodbye, Gene. You know, and they. Uh, it's very people. People uh, appreciate when we remember their names. Also, we said uh, the greeter represents the church, the way they look, the way they dress, the way they act. Uh, very important. Also, uh, greeters are sources of information. Where's the bathroom? Where are the classes? Where's this? Where's that? You know, is there extra parking on the side? Uh, my, my mother's coming, but she has a walker. Where's the best place? You know, okay, we're on the side. Let me show you where. And always, you don't point to where stuff is. You do what? You take them, yeah, you take them, absolutely. You're facilitators for a challenging situation because visiting a new church is what? It's, yes, it's scary, it's stressful, you, know, you don't know anybody, especially if you're, let's say you're a Catholic and your buddy is a member of the church and he's been bugging you, come to church, you'll see, you'll like it. Okay, well, I'll go there Sunday. And he shows up and he, you know, he doesn't, he hasn't got a clue and you're not there yet. So the, 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 the greeter is his, you know, immediate friend and contact and protector in this very strange environment here, very strange environment. So you're the facilitator. And the important thing that the facilitator does is he or she, there's one word that I emphasized last time, he reassures, it'll be okay, you'll see, we're not going to hurt you, it'll be fine, you'll enjoy it. You, know, you come tell me after if you enjoy, you know, reassurance, very, very important. In all relationships, in all the counseling that I've done, number one things that partner needs, partners need in a marriage, reassurance. They need reassurance, that they're loved, that they're cared for, that they'll be faithful, they need reassurance. Same thing with the, uh, with the visitors. You're a networker, you begin, what was the word we used? It was a military thing they used during the Iraq war. You start, embedding. you start embedding them. You start embedding the visitor into the congregation as uh, quickly as you, uh, as you can. And you do that by doing what? Yeah, introduce them. Uh, John, this is, I'd like you to meet one of our elders. This is so-and-so, and you know, this is my, it's my wife. And you, know, you, you, you introduce them. Uh, uh, and and uh, we said the number one problem with the greeters was they talk to, they talk to each other. And it's normal, you know, you're waiting, you're talking to each other instead of kind of watch what's, uh, what's going on. You're an usher. Again, that repeats the idea, you don't, you don't just point, you take them. And let's not be afraid to bring people into the auditorium to say, can I help you find a place to sit if you've never been? And they'll say, oh, I know, I, I'm going to go sit with my mother, I know where she's at. Okay, great. The question I always ask, first question, you know, it's easy to get into, uh, is there someone I can help you find? And that tells me where they, yes, uh, we're here visiting from Dallas, we're visiting my brother, okay, that tells me the whole story, you know, who's your brother, you know, and so on and so forth. Um, uh, and, and you are the contact, greeters will have, uh, we, I showed the uh, slide, I don't have it up now, but you know, we'll try to get some cards for the greeters who say, okay, this is my ministry, that's what I'm going to work at. So um, uh, we'll get a picture, how we'll get a picture of you or we'll lift one from the, from the directory and we'll make a little card that says Greeter, Church of Christ, the, the address and the phone number of here, not yours. And, if so, and you can tell them, look, if there's something you need or something I can help you with, you know, just, just, just call. Well, they'll call the building and they'll say, well, Bruce said you know, that I could call if I had a question, you know, all right, what's your number? And they'll get in touch with Bruce and Bruce will call you back. All right. Um, I think that's uh, everything we did, right, in contact. Okay, greeter ministry. I, I want to give this ministry another name in order to kind of uh, personalize it. Yeah, I'd like to call it the Barnabas ministry, not just the greeter ministry. 
He was a uh, he was a facilitator, wasn't he? He was a he was a facilitator. He was a peacemaker. Paul was mad at Mark because Mark left the, the <clears throat> left the team, if you wish, on the first missionary journey. Didn't continue. He was afraid. Whatever. It doesn't give us a reason. But he he went back to Jerusalem. Then when they went on their second missionary journey, Barnabas says, "Hey, my cousin's coming. You know, blah blah blah." And Paul said, "No, no, no. That's not going to happen. You know, the guy left us." And and it says. They had, a, they had a dispute. Imagine that, two brothers in the church having a dispute. I can't even imagine that happening. Hey, Harold, have you ever seen that in 80 years of eldering? Oh, it was about the first week I heard about it. After that, After, it, just, it just went away, right? So, and, uh, and, and, what it, uh, and Paul, uh, he left, and, uh, and, 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 and Barnabas, who did he take with him? He took Mark. Poor Mark's feeling bad and he said, man, talk about the only guy who's been rejected by Paul to go on a missionary journey, you know? So he's feeling bad and what, and what does, uh, and what does uh, uh, Barnabas do? He rehabilitates Mark. So he's got the character for that. He's also evangelistic, isn't he? He goes on the evangelism uh, journey. Uh, uh, we find something that happened later on. He recruits Paul for what? Later on. Or, or excuse me, before the missionary journey, but as part of Paul's training, uh, wasn't it Barnabas that went and found Paul and recruited him and brought him to Antioch to teach? Exactly, he says, wait a minute, I know a guy, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a Roman citizen, he's familiar with Gentiles, so on and so forth. So he's got all of, all of these things. One other thing too is um, uh, when Paul wanted to go to Jerusalem, uh, to, 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 to talk to the apostles, you know, to get some credibility. Uh, who was it that introduced them? Uh, it was Barnabas that opened the doors. He, he, he opened the doors for Paul to... And then uh, I find great humility in Barnabas because when they left, Barnabas was the kind of the lead guy because he was the experienced guy, you know? And then as he saw Paul stepping forward and with the power of preaching and the ability to do miracles, the Holy Spirit could have given the ability to do miracles to Barnabas just as much as he could have given it to Paul, but he didn't. He gave it to Paul and Barnabas was astute enough to realize, oh, I'm, I'm, the, uh, I'm the helper here. Yeah, I got to back up. I, I, this, is, this is the front guy. I'm the back guy. And so he's the behind the scenes kind of guy. And a lot of time I've found in my experience that Greeters are behind the scenes kind of people. They're not necessarily the people who want to get up on stage and make announcements and lead singing and this and that, but they're good at behind the scenes of making things happen, of putting, you know, plugging things together and preparing the table and so on and so forth. You know? uh, it's that kind of character that really succeeds well uh, in a, a greeter ministry. So unofficially, uh, we don't have to call it that, but I, I like to see this as the greeter ministry. So <clears throat> what are greeters supposed to do? Four things, four things. One, greet at every service. I know that is just you know, radical greeterism. <laughs> yes, what makes us think that our own members don't enjoy being greeted? You know, they've had a, okay, in a, in a, one second. Uh, they've had a hard day at work. And they've run home, if, let's say it's a mom. She's run home, she's fixed dinner, her husband's come home, they're rushing, it's a Wednesday night. Oh my goodness, you know, uh, they, get, they get it all together, jump in the car, you know, get the kids run off to the, the building over there. And they, she finally, she made it in three minutes to seven, you know. Isn't it nice if there's a greeter there that says, uh, Joanne, oh, I'm glad you made it. How you doing? Let me give you a hug. You look like you need a hug, you know? I mean, sometimes that's the greeter's hug is the only hug that you're going to get. Or the only friendly handshake, maybe, that you're going to get on that day after you finished your shift at wherever. It's just that we've so focused on the greeters greeting visitors that greeters have thought, oh, I'm only supposed to be there at 1030 on Sunday morning, you know what I'm saying, for that 15 minutes and that's it. But it isn't as rewarding as being a greeter. You're, you're the greeter for, you know, you're the welcomer for everybody who comes in, the kids, the grandmas, everybody, and the visitors, and the visitors. 
Some people say, well, I don't, uh, I don't know everybody in the church. Man, you want to get to know people in the church? Serve as a greeter. It won't take long. You're going to get to know people in the, in the, in the church. So 9.30, 10.30, that's the best time for visitors. 5 p.m. on Sunday night, you're greeting mostly members. Wednesday night, eh, there's some visitors that come, but I find that the members truly appreciate the greeting and the welcome that they get on Wednesday because they're usually tired. They're usually tired. The kids are cranky and so on and so forth. They're usually tired. It's a good time. Even members need a warm welcome and a handshake and a hug, okay? Number two, be aware of resources and information for both visitors and members. You're the person that's supposed to know where everything's at. Information packs, welcome bread for visitors, the sign-up sheets, the information on the, uh, on the location for drop-off items as well as detail. You know, the guy comes in with two bags of groceries. Uh, we did the shopping for the, uh, for the pantry. Where do, where do these go? I don't know. Put them over there. Well, no. You find out where those go. You know? um, uh, sign up sheets. It's OK to, you, know, you come in a little early, you look, what, what, are, what sign up sheet? Oh, we go, oh, the spring picnic is coming up. OK, basically, that's here and that's there so on and so forth. It's like you're coming in and uh, it's a store. You make sure that all your stuff is, is ready. You know, we got canned goods, we, uh, oh, we're missing milk, I have to go back and get some milk for the fridge. You know, you, oh, we have a card. There's only two visitor packs. It's Sunday morning, all you have is two visitor packs. Uh, you need to get some more visitor packs. Um, also, you're familiar with the bulletin. Take a look at, you, you come in, look at the bulletin, what's going on, you know what's going on, you can give information. Third thing, bad weather preparations and emergencies. We have umbrellas and we have teenagers. What do umbrellas and teenagers have in common? Nothing, they never use them. <laughs> but, but, when it's raining and it's you know, service time, 15 minutes, and it's raining, we have those umbrellas and we have the teenagers walking around. We uh, recruit those teenagers to go out into the parking lot and open that umbrella up and begin walking in people so they don't get you know, soaked with rain. And it's, uh, again, a courtesy that is really well appreciated. Uh, in French, we say, my mother used to say to me, in order that I would mind my manners. She would say, montre-le que tu sais bien vivre. Michel, montre-le que tu sais bien vivre. Yeah, that's better. That's the way she used to say it, like that, with the finger pointing, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and in English, well, you, you, Emily knows already what I said, but in English, it was, Michael, show them that you know how to live. Right? Parents say, haven't we all said that to our children? Show them, how, show them that you've got manners, that you know how to live, you know? Some guy's coming to visit, never mind a visitor, one of our members, uh, older members, is walking pretty slow in the rain, you know? I'm, I'm thinking of your dad, for example, you know? Have, it's pouring rain, he's not going to stay in his car, he's going to get out and he's going to come to church, you know? Somebody thinking ahead is running out there and he's got the umbrella over him. And it counts 10 times more if it's a teenager. Well, thank you, young lady, or thank you, young man. You, know, you, you have fine young people here, you know. I mean, really, really, absolutely. Um, steps that are clear. Who's supposed to clear the, the steps when it snows? I mean, once a year, but you, know, you, only, have it, you, only, you only have to have snow once a year in an icy, an icy uh, steps there to fall down those steps, which I have. Uh, know where the emergency equipment is. Some kid, for some reason, I was playing with my knife, you know, and I you know, sliced my hand and it's dripping blood, you know. Uh, you know, and comes up to Hal, Hal, uh, what, what do I do, you know? Uh, we need to know where the first aid kit is. Another thing that we haven't talked about that we need to, I mean, once the, this is, done here is we need to be prepared to assist the security team if the building needs evacuation. What if we had to be locked down? Uh, how would we do that? Who, who opens the doors? Who directs traffic? 
I mean, what do we do? What if all the, uh, we lose power all of a sudden? I mean, you know, this building is well lit, but if the power goes out, Hal and I know, it gets very dark in this building if the power goes out. Or if a tornado you know, heads up, you know, we're here, we're singing away, it's two hours, and you know how the tornadoes are, you know what I'm saying? What do we do? So there'll need to be the, a meeting at some point to sit down with the, the organized, you know, the greeter coordinators and the security guys, and they'll have to say, okay, in the event that we have to secure the building or evacuate the building, what do we do? We have, um, we have safety and police and different fire professionals that are members of our congregation who can help us develop a plan for that. You know? uh, you regret it only after you sh should have known what to do. You don't, you don't want to answer, you don't want to answer the news media or the police or the fire department. Well, what did you do? We didn't know what to do. Why? Well, we didn't have a plan. You didn't have a plan. You have 300 people in this auditorium you know, once a week and, and you don't have a plan to evacuate? No. When was the last time you had a fire drill? Uh, never. 25 years ago. 25 years ago. Yeah, just before the fire. It was, uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. All right, and number four, uh, visitor information. Uh, asking the visitor you know, to fill out uh, to fill out the, uh, their cards. We talked about that last week. Sometimes it's convenient to say, hey, don't forget to fill out that visitor card. Uh, and they'll say, well, can I do it now? Sure, let me help you, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so if you're a coordinator, here's the responsibility. You have to be present at services, normally. Stuff happens, of course. You know, I miss church, I was sick, you know, but normally it's your, it's your habit, it's your routine that you're there for Bible class, you're there for worship, you're there Sunday night, you're there Wednesday, it's just part of your life. You, know, you don't have to make an extra effort, it's what you do, you know what I mean? So that's one of the basic things. Number two, uh, maintain the greeter volunteer list. This is what uh, Deanne works with. She has the master list, she picks names and she gives them to uh, Tina and uh, Tina makes little reminder cards and she mails them that you get a little reminder card in the mail and said hi hi John uh, you know you're greeting Sunday morning at such and such a time you know thirdly prepare greeter schedule for duty times and provide Tina uh, with the schedule for the card mail out so one thing is one person is maintaining the, the volunteers. Who, who, uh, who are the volunteers? One person actually has a schedule and says, all right, Sunday morning, I'm going to pick these people, this, 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 and that. Sunday night, this person. And, like you, you need more Sunday at worship time. You need less on Wednesday night, obviously. One greeter, two maybe on Wednesday, Sunday night. Four or five uh, on Sunday mornings is, is good. Um, let's see, one, two, three, four. Confirm that the scheduled greeters will be present for their duty times and use fill-ins if necessary. Now, uh, I, I don't know, uh, Harold, you, you just greet, right? Because you greet, period. You, you don't get... I'm not part of the team. Yeah, right. He just, he just uh, and, and we're, we're expecting our elders to be, not necessarily having to be opening the doors and that, but at least to be around so that we can introduce, we can introduce them to, you know, to, to visitors and so on and so forth. Um, uh, uh, I use Johnny as an example. Johnny handles the schedule for you know, those who serve communion and all that. The guy, whoever does the, like I do announcements some, sometimes. And I get, I'll, get a, uh, I'll get a text from him on Saturday that'll just say, hey, you're doing, you're doing announcements Sunday. And I'll send him a thumbs up, yes. Uh, he sent me another one uh, la last week and I said, sorry, I have a cold, I'm not going to be able to make it. Okay, that means he knows in advance and he recruited somebody else to, to do the announcements, okay? Well, in the same way, the coordinator says, I'm expecting five people to be greeting on Sunday. And I'm going to make sure those five know that I'm expecting them to be there. So, you know, a quick text, but, but okay, I've, I've confirmed all my people. If I'm missing two, well, I'm going to have to go to the list and say, hey, Bill, you, you know, you, You've all, are you good for Sunday? Because I'm missing somebody. Oh yeah, I'll be there. Okay, fine. Just to make sure you've got your, your people. Also, assure that all greeter supplies are on hand. 
Welcome bread, info packets, sign-up sheets, umbrellas, whatever we need, extra pens, cards, other types of information about the church. Also recruit, recruit and train volunteer greeters. Some people would like to do it, but they, they're afraid to ask. If you just come up to them and say, you know what, you, you know, how'd you like to be, be a greeter? I'll show you how to do it, it's very easy. Have you got a hand? Yeah, yeah. If you, can you do this? Yes, okay, you're hired, you know what I'm saying? It's all good. And then confirm that elders, ministers are aware of visitors who have filled out attendance cards for the purpose of follow-up, so important. Visitors that on their own decision making, you know, of their own volition, there's the word I was looking for, of their own volition, they've said, today I'm going to go visit that church at the corner. I'm going to go visit the Choctaw Church. Of I've heard about it. I see the sign. They're, you know, they're, they're the only church that publishes the name of their sermons, the title of their sermons, Sunday morning and Sunday night. Nobody else does that. We're the only, I, I, I saw a thing there that really interests me. I, I believe I'll go to that church. That's low hanging fruit. You don't have to go knock on their door. You don't have to send them anything. You don't have to have a debate. They are coming to you, to us, to look us over, to hear a sermon. I mean, are you kidding me? So it is really important that we do get a a card, some information from them. You're, 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 it's not like pressure. They came and we're saying, well, we're glad that you're here. We'd like, a, and I say, a record of your visit. That's all. You don't have to put, you know, just, just give us your name. Blah, blah, blah. Now, what happens is those cards go to the elders. I know that uh, usually Harold's the first one to be rifling through the, the attendance cards looking for visitors because he's going to call them up or maybe Bob or somebody else among the elder or Marty. And he's going to say, hey, you know, we're, we're glad that you came. I'm, I'm so-and-so, I'm one of the elders. Any questions, whatever, you know, drop by. And you, was it you, you mentioned that some, uh, there's, you know, that's, that's just old fashioned follow up. You know, if we were in business, we just call that customer service. This is good old fashioned customer service. For us, that's just good old, uh, Christian, uh, Christian love, agape. We follow up on a stranger. You came, well, we reach out to you as, uh, as well. Because a lot of times they come and they just wait to see just how loving are these people. Okay, they got three ministers, they got six elders, they got 18 deacons or whatever, you know. And if not a one of them, not a one follows up, are you kidding me? So when somebody follows up, it's kind of half expected and it kind of reassures them that, okay, this, this, this church is really putting their money where their mouth is. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're putting their time in. Very, very important. One of the things too is um, uh, we need to realize the opportunity that we have here in Choctaw. As I drive around, I see them clearing so much land. They've already got the sidewalks put in in the, where is it, the uh, Reno and Westminster? Anyway, there's a huge lot there where they've already poured the sidewalks and everything because they want to build. It's springtime, they want to sell houses. Well, you know, those people among them, they're going to be looking for a church. So, one last thing I want to uh, talk to you about. If you have made a connection with a visitor um, and uh, you're going to introduce them, uh, be a little judicious as to who you introduce them to to give us the, the, the greatest opportunity to make an impact and a follow-up. For example, you have mature couples, uh, or members who come from elsewhere, you know, who are you know, church shopping and so on and so forth. Who would you introduce them? If you had only one person to introduce them to, who would you introduce them to? You or Marty? 
Well, I, I appreciate you saying that, but yeah, Marty, you know, I'm, I'm retired now, but, but uh, Marty would be, he's, he's our uh, pulpit minister, he's the most visible of the ministers, you know, and people who are church shopping, so on and so forth, uh, I hate to use that term, but you know, they're looking around for a new place to, to go, they, they'll want to meet the, the minister, you know what I mean? And, so, and he, you know, he's great, you know, great interpersonal skills with, uh, with members and makes them peop people feel uh, comfortable. How about, uh, uh, <clears throat> he's 28, she's 23, they got two little babies, they're dragging uh, behind them, or, or you know, they got, they got kids, you know, who are you going to introduce them to? Titus. Yeah, Titus, he's our youth and family minister. Um, she's single, she's a single mom, she's coming in, she's got a, you know, a 12 year old, something like that, or uh, we've got a single guy like Brandon over here wandering in you know, from Las Vegas, lost, the lost soul from Las Vegas we call him. Uh, you know, who, who are we going to introduce this guy to? John. We'll introduce him to John. I mean, it, it doesn't all neatly fit like that, but to introduce Brandon to John will help them, they, you know, they'll, they'll have a connection right away. You know, John, hey, brother, what's going on? You know what I'm saying? So be, be sensitive to that idea when you're introducing people and putting people, touching people uh, together. 